Hey everyone, welcome to Crazy Calculations. For today's Crazy Calculation, we will learn how to find the area of rectangles, squares, and triangles. If you ever want to skip around in this video, the timestamps for all the different parts can be found in the description down below. Now let's get started. Before we learn how to find the area of shapes, you might be wondering, what is area? Well, simply speaking, area is just the amount of space or area that a shape takes up. Let's take a look at this rectangle right here. This rectangle has a length of three feet and a width of two feet. To better visualize the amount of space that this rectangle takes up, let's draw in some lines where all the feet are. That looks great. Now that we've drawn in lines for every foot, we know that each one of these squares here is one foot long and one foot wide, which is what we call one square foot. It can also be written shorter like this, or also like this, one foot squared. All three of these ways are correct. Now, to find the area of this rectangle, we just need to count how many squares we have. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six total squares. Since each one of these squares has an area of one square foot, that means our total area of this rectangle is six square feet. That wasn't too bad, right? So do we just draw in lines for all the feet and count the squares for all rectangles? Well, not exactly. Counting the squares for small rectangles like this is pretty simple, but imagine how difficult that would be for a huge rectangle, like one that is 200 feet long and 100 feet wide. Imagine just sitting at your desk, drawing lines and counting squares all day long, just to solve for the area of a rectangle. That sounds awful. Because of this, we have a super simple formula for finding the area of a rectangle. To find the area of a rectangle, we just need to multiply the length by the width. The L right here stands for the length, and the W right here stands for the width. Remember, it doesn't really matter which one you multiply first, because the order of numbers doesn't matter in multiplication. For example, three times eight is the exact same thing as eight times three. All that matters is that you multiply two different sides together, and those two sides are next to each other, not across from each other. So now that I've shown you the formula to find the area of a rectangle, let's try to find the area of one together. Let's take a look at this rectangle right here. It's a length of four feet and a width of three feet. So using our formula right here, we just need to do four times three, which is 12. Oh, and we can't forget, when finding the area of shapes, we always need to label our answer with the proper units. Since this rectangle's side lengths were given to us in feet, that means our area will be in square feet. So our final answer is 12 square feet. Although the rectangles we've looked at so far are all in feet, there are many other types of units that our answers can be in. It all depends on what type of unit your shape is measured in, but your answer could be in square meters, square inches, square millimeters, square miles, and many, many more. Well, what if there are no units given in your shape and it just looks like this? Well, just write square units or units squared. They can be written shorter just like this. Using units are super important for people to know what you're talking about. For example, one square mile can fit up to 484 football fields but a shape with the area of one square millimeter would just look like a tiny dot to your eyes. That's why it's so important to label using the proper units. Now that you know everything you need to know to find the area of a rectangle, let's try a few on your own. Find the area of these three rectangles. Don't forget to pause before I reveal my answers. Are you ready to see my answers? Here are the answers I got for these three rectangles. Just like earlier, I multiplied the length and the width together. So for the blue rectangle, I did four times five, which was 20. Then I labeled my answers using the proper square units. So for the blue rectangle, the rectangle was given to me in miles. So that's why my answer was in square miles. I used the same method for all of the other rectangles. Did you get a few of these answers correct? If you did, then nice job. But if you didn't, don't worry, because we still have three more rectangles that we can practice with. Don't forget, pause now before I reveal the answers. 
Are you done solving on your own? Here are the answers I got. Again, I just multiplied the length and the width together and labeled using the proper units. You didn't forget your units, did you? Hopefully not. Well, now you know how to find the area of a rectangle, so nice job. Here's a gold star for your awesome work. Now that you're a pro at finding the area of a rectangle, finding the area of a square will be even easier for you. Since every side of a square is equal in length, we just need to know that number that every side shares and multiply it by itself. The formula for finding the area of a square is just the length of one side times itself. I'll work through the first one with you. As you can see, the side length for this square is three. So we just need to do three times three, which is nine. Again, we can't forget our units, and since our square is given to us in yards, our answer should be in square yards, which gives us a total of nine square yards. See, that's even simpler than finding the area of a rectangle. Why don't you try a few on your own now? Don't forget to pause now before I reveal the answers. Are you ready to see what I got? Here are the answers for these squares. Again, I multiplied the side length by itself, like five times five for the first square. And then I attached the proper units. Since the pink square was given to me in miles, my answer was in square miles. I'm sure you did amazing, but let's do a few more practice problems to solidify your new skill. Can you find the area of these three squares? Don't forget to pause. Are you ready for my answers? Here's what I got as the area for these three squares. Just like before, I multiplied the side by itself and then attached the proper units at the end. Did you get a few more right? Awesome work. Here's a green star for your new ability to find the area of a square. Now we just have one more shape to learn how to find the area of, and it's a triangle. Finding the area of a triangle is a little different than finding the area of a rectangle or square, but it's not too tricky for you to handle. Like how we had lengths and widths to find our area of rectangles, there are two parts of triangles that we will need to know to find the area of a triangle. The first one is one of the sides, which is called the base. The next is called the height, which is an imaginary line that goes from the point opposite of the base all the way to the base, just like this. Know that the height always makes a right angle with the base, but if you don't know what that means, don't worry. It's not too important for our purpose today. You will often see the height of a triangle shown with a dotted line, just like the one right here. Before I tell you the formula for finding the area of a triangle, let's try to visualize it first. Take a look at this triangle right here. Let's call this side the base. Since this is what we call a right triangle, and the side next to the base makes a right angle with it, the other side is the height. Now let's draw a rectangle with a length and a width that are equal to the base and the height of this triangle, just like this. As you can clearly see when we put these two shapes together, the triangle is exactly half the area of the rectangle. It takes up half the space. Well, is this true for all triangles? Let's see. Let's go back to our original triangle. Now let's draw a rectangle with the same dimensions around it, and then fill the empty space in with a different color. The blue triangle takes up exactly half the space of the rectangle, but it might be a little hard to see right now, so let's rotate the leftover yellow space so we can see it better. As you can see, when we rearrange the yellow, it makes it another triangle with the exact same area as the blue triangle. That means that every rectangle fits exactly two triangles that share the same dimensions. This leads us to our formula for finding the area of a triangle. Since exactly two triangles with the same dimensions fit inside their corresponding rectangle, that means that the area of a triangle is one half of the rectangle, making our formula one half times the base times the height. Let me work through the first triangle with you. As you can see, this triangle has a base of four inches and a height of three inches. So if we plug in our numbers into the formula that we just found earlier, we will get one half times four times three, which is six. Then since our triangle's dimensions are in inches, we need to label our answer with square inches, giving us a final answer of six square inches. That wasn't too bad, was it? Are you ready to try a few on your own? Try your best to solve the area of these three triangles on your own. 
Don't forget, pause before I give away the answer. All done? Here are the answers I got for these three triangles. Just like that first time, I multiplied the base, the height, and one half all together. Remember, the order which you multiply doesn't matter. You will get the right answer as long as you multiply the correct numbers. For example, in the first triangle right here, I did five times eight for the base and the height, and then I multiplied by one half because a triangle is always half the area of its corresponding rectangle. Then, after I multiplied, I attached the proper square units, just like how we did with the rectangles and the squares. Well, I'm sure you did amazing with the area of these triangles. Let's practice a few more just to make sure we've mastered this crazy calculation. Can you find the area of these? Remember to pause. Are you ready for the answers? Here they are. Just like before, I multiplied the base, the height, and one half together to get my value, and then labeled using the proper units. Remember, the red triangle is a right triangle because it has a right angle in it. And that means the height of this triangle is also one of the sides. Did you get a few more of these triangles correct? Great job. Here's a red star for your stellar work. Now you know how to find the area of rectangles, squares, and triangles. But before you go, we have a pop quiz with some extra challenge problems. Are you up for the challenge? Question one. What is the area of this rectangle right here? Don't forget to pause before I reveal the answer. Are you ready? You might recognize this rectangle, and that's because it was in the beginning of this video when we couldn't solve it because it was too big to draw in every square foot for this big of a rectangle. Well, as you remember, we now have a formula for solving for the area of a rectangle, so it's not too difficult anymore. To find the value, we just multiply 100 by 200 to get 20,000. And since our rectangle is in feet, our answer should be in square feet, giving us a final answer of 20,000 square feet. Aren't you glad we have a super simple formula instead of having to draw in each square foot? I sure am. Are you ready to move on now? Here's question two. It's a word problem, but I promise you it's not too hard for you to handle. Jenny wants to calculate the area of her backyard. She measures one side and it is 10 meters long and she knows her backyard is a square. What is the area of her backyard? If you want a hint, I would recommend you to draw a little sketch of Jenny's backyard. This is what my sketch looks like. Now that you've gotten your hint, try your best to solve for the area of Jenny's backyard. She's counting on you. Don't forget to pause. Ready for the answer? Well, since we know that Jenny's backyard is a square, we can pull out our handy dandy formula for finding the area of a square, side times side. Now, all we need to do is follow the formula. So we do 10 times 10, which equals 100, and then label using square meters, since our yard is in meters. So our final answer is, the area of Jenny's yard is 100 square meters. Did you get that? Word problems can be tough sometimes, but never give up on them. Are you ready for the last question? Question three, what is the area of this triangle? Don't forget to pause the video. Do you have your answer? We have to remember that even though this triangle is rotated, the base and the height are still the same. Our base for this triangle is 12 centimeters and our height is four centimeters, shown by the dotted line right here. Now that we know our base and our height, we can pull out our formula for finding the area of a triangle. One half times base times height. Next, we can plug in our numbers into the formula, which gives us one half times 12 times four, which is 24. Oh, and we can't forget our units. Since the triangle is measured in centimeters, our final answer should be in square centimeters. That makes our final answer 24 square centimeters. Did you get a few of these questions right? If you did, give yourself a pat on the back because these questions can be pretty challenging. Last but not least, 
To conclude our lesson today, I'll present you with a real world situation for finding the area of a shape. Here's a challenge for you to do from home. I want you to find a ruler or other measuring device at home and measure the dimensions of the screen you're watching this video on, whether it's a phone, tablet, computer, TV, or other device. What is the area of this video on your device? Feel free to comment your answer down below. Well, that's all I have for this video, but let me just say, you did amazing today. Now you know how to find the area of not one, but three different shapes. Now you can brag to everyone around you. Just kidding. Remember, even when you're super amazing at something, it's important to be humble and not show off too much. Instead, what you should do is use your skills to help and teach those around you, like how I hope I helped you today. It's an amazing feeling to help someone understand something, especially when it's a tricky subject like math. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment them down below, and either I or one of your crazy classmates will try to help you out. Other than that, I hope you had fun with today's crazy calculation, and I'll see you next time.